terms of schools welping, welcoming kind of more students back, is there anything teachers should be looking out for um, in terms of pupils showing signs of kind of mental health difficulties or even signs of trauma? So if they are having kind of memories or traumatic experiences at home and stuff, how might that show up in the classroom? What, what can teachers and head teachers and anyone in schools kind of be looking out for? Okay, so I think one of the first things to remember about trauma is that we may be able to, um, as humans, work through some of this without anything else, but we need to feel safe in order for that to happen. So the first thing to really think about is how safe is this person right now? Um, is there anything we can do to kind of up their safety? And allowing them a little bit of time to see whether when they're safe, things start to resolve. So I'm imagining that when people return to school, it's going to be a bit messy for a while uh, because, you know, there's going to have been lots of different experiences of what people will have been doing, including how they've been learning and how able they are to sit down and be in a classroom again and how safe they feel and all those other things. So I suppose for the first little bit, it will be very much about just going back to safety first and settling everyone back in. And then I think after a period of time, if there are still, and I will talk about some of the things that you might notice, but if there are still problems, then that's when we maybe need to start kind of um, getting a bit more concerned and thinking about what we might do for those young people. But I think initially it's holding on to, I suppose, what psychologists might call watchful waiting, mm -hmm. which is like, right, let's get everyone back, let's get everyone safe, and then let's see how we're doing then. Mm -hmm. um, and then I suppose what you're thinking about is changes in in you know teachers will know their students very well so they'll probably also recognize some changes uh, potentially and um, that can be changes in how they kind of manage themselves perhaps they may be quieter than they were before perhaps they're going to be noisier than they were before you know and actually just noticing is is something different about this young person does something not feel quite right and I think it's okay to use your intuition around these things mm. too and just think actually it just doesn't this just doesn't feeling like how this person would usually respond to something. Um, and then I suppose you're looking for kind of more obvious things like uh, perhaps being a bit more hypervigilant, finding it hard to concentrate, um, you know, having memory retrieval problems, so not being able to bring to mind information that was just maybe presented um, in, and not just one offs, but mm. regularly. I mean, obviously, we'll all have times where maybe we all daydream or we won't be listening to what was being said. But if that's repeated again and again, then that may be a sign that something else going on there. Being a bit more weepy, finding it harder to regulate emotions, seeming very tired, perhaps. Um, you know, all of those sorts of things can be signs that. But, um, mm. perhaps this young person is struggling a little bit more um, in terms of their sort of you know mental health at that, yeah. at that moment of time but I think it is important that we all recognize that we may have the mechanisms within us to manage this we've mm. been through a really unusual time and we've had to keep adapting and we will keep adapting and it may be that just that sense of being back, feeling like they belong, having someone looking after them that's keeping them safe um, may help a lot of um, those who have found this challenging to just sort of settle back down again. Mm -hmm. yeah. They tell me life is beautiful.